Hello everyone, I guess you hopefully guys are having a wonderful day and today we are here with a Steel Dragon Slayer Guide for Old School RuneScape and my endless adventure to make as many Slayer Guides as possible. So hopefully you guys enjoy, if you do, make sure to leave a like and any other miscellaneous guides you'd like to see, would love to hear them down below in a comment. With that said though, let's go ahead and get into it. So to start, should you kill Steel Dragons? In my opinion, no. So you could just turn off the video, head on out, cancel that bad boy or block it, whatever you gotta do. I have a video talking about which tasks I would block for each individual Slayer Master, so you can check that out if you'd like. But it's just a very long task and it offers bad XP and not very much DP. So all around, a lot of negatives, no real reason to be joyous about a Steel Dragon's task. It is one that I despise greatly. As far as the requirements or the requirement, depending on what you're going with, one of either 70 range, 70 in your melees, or 70 in magic. Steel Dragons have very high defense, so you would also like to have very high in whatever sort of combat you are using. In addition, if you're going to be at a close proximity to them, you would like 43 prayers. So if you're using range and mage and you watch your distance closely, you won't have to worry about it. But if you're using melee or you're just someone that doesn't pay a ton of attention, 43 prayer would be nice. A little bit more about Steel Dragons. They are weak to mage or stab, and that is relatively weak because they're not really weak at all. They attack with melee and dragon fire, and their max hit is a 22 or 50 with dragon fire as far as what you could expect from the drop table they drop elite clues at a 1 in 500 clip and hard clues at a 1 in 64 dragon plate legs and plate skirt are both 1 in 5 12 drops or 1 in 256 collectively the draconic visage is a 1 in 5k drop rate and the average loot per kill is about 7k. For the melee options here, a couple setups. These are a little higher level, but what I would say is for the lower to med level people that are coming here, range or mage is probably going to be your best friend. I will offer a couple other options for these setups, but melee is pretty hard if you're low. The armor options are listed there, but in addition, some added others, just some miscellaneous stuff. You can add the Abbey Daggers, a nice cheaper option. Uh, in addition to that, Monk's Robes are an extremely cheap prayer option, and Bandos is kind of more just a sweaty option option if you're looking for DPS. Looking at the inventory here, some potions to start. We have a super strength and super attack. In addition to that, extended super anti-fires. If you're bringing something that doesn't have any fire breath protection, then you're going to need super anti-fires. However, if you don't, then you can just bring regular and both of these would ideally be extended as well. Along with that, some prayer potions and some spare food. I also have a teleport to the dragons and a teleport away along with some high alks and a rune axe and some coins if you're coming through the longer path for the Brimhaven option. For the range setups here, a little bit cheaper. On the left hand side, a really, really low level option. The middle, a little bit higher level. And for the added options, some more expensive stuff there. If you do bring the Twisted Buckler, remember you have to bring super extended anti fires. And for the inventory here, a lot the same as before. However, you won't really need the prayer potions. You only really need prayer potions if you're going to be using boosting prayers, or you could bring one maybe just for some protect melee when you're looting. Beyond that, the inventory is much the same of the melee one. And then finally, for the mage options on the left hand side, a trident of the sea setup, and in the middle, a trident of the swamp setup. Along with that, the inventory basically the exact same as the range. You're looking for a lot of the same outcomes there. However, this time switched in some magic potions. You could also bring an imbued heart if you have that type of money. The most likely destination that people will be killing these is the Brimhaven dungeon. There are two different entry points. So the first two options will be using the Southern setup and that requires a one-time payment of 5,000 trading sticks. And the Northern entrance for the third and fourth method will require 875 GP along with a rune ax. And keep in mind, you will need extra GP if you are chartering here so just know that. The first teleport option is the Thai Boy Wan Eye Telly. This can be purchased through the Grand Exchange and puts you directly to the east of the southern option. The second best option is the Fairy Ring Code CKR. For this, you'll need Fairy Tale Part 2 partially completed, and this will put you to the southeast of the southern option. For the northern entry, we have the House Teleport. You can do this by either having your house located in Brimhaven or using a scroll of redirection on a house tab. And then finally, an option that will allow everyone to get here is the Artie Boat. You can access this just a little bit to the south of the Ardoin teleport 30 GP to charter on over here and then from there just run south make your way there however you'd like personally I'm going to be using the Thai boy one eye teleport and hopping in much closer towards the dragons make sure also before you get in there that you drink up on your anti fires especially if you don't have an anti dragon shield like myself so like I mentioned before there are two entry points this one is much further away so just a quick little run through if you are using this one enter the dungeon if you're using the northern setup you'll come in right here just go ahead and actuate through these vines travel right through here and you'll go over the 
this little agility shortcut. Then from there, continue through this room, going through some fire giants, and then winding your way to where I am currently. It's a little bit of a run, but it's not too bad. There's not too many things that'll hurt you along the way, but here there are some black demons, so I'm going to go ahead and throw on my protect from melee. If you're using the southern option, you'll be thrown down just right here, so it's a pretty easy meetup. And right inside here is the iron and steel dragon lair. In addition to that, there's also a slayer only segment, which is much better if you're on a task because they're actually kind of segmented. Uh, one section is iron drags and one section is steel drags, so a lot easier to get your task done in here rather than in the outside lair. However, personally, I'm not on a task. So I'm going to go out there and try to find a steel drag for me. All right, trying to grab that steel dragon there. Once you're in the fight, make sure, you, again, you have adequate dragon fire protection. And on top of that, go ahead and drink up on your combat potions if you'd like. Then you can pray piety or whatever other boosting prayers you'd want as well. I'm doing pretty good work, but again, I'm max combat with max gear, so I'm going to be doing a bit better than the average person. If you're ranging or maging, um, there's really not much to worry about as long as you're adequately protected. There's essentially nothing you have to do you just sit back let your bolts or let your magic spells do the work but it will take a little while these are not easy to kill by any means especially not when you're getting tasks of 30 40 50 of them or whatever but if you're using melee no matter how you're killing them it's a pretty easy time and the only real nuisance of the task is just the length of it and the lack of drops that you will be getting because something like this while it is kind of nice it's not very great i can't pick up all the steel bars I can't really pick up the dragon bones, so a lot of it goes to waste. For the second option of where we could go, it would be the Catacombs of Karend. The best way to get here is the Xerix Heart Teleport. The second best option would be the Karend Teleport. And the third best would be the Xerix Glade Teleport. That would just teleport you a good bit to the southeast. And then the final way that everyone can get here is the Veos Boat by teleporting to the Port Piscarilius through Port Serum. Once you've managed your way to the Catacombs in one way or another, go ahead and go down the statue. Then from there, there are a couple different ways that we could get about it. If you have a pickaxe that you can bring then there is kind of this nice little mining shortcut that you can go through or you can use an agility shortcut over there it's really up to you this mining one is a little bit quicker however obviously you need another inventory space if you weren't going to use this you could just continue through the skeleton area up through the hellhounds and then through these blue and red dragons then from there you can use this little agility shortcut that i'll show you about so essentially you could just run through the outskirts right here and go through that kind of shortcut that shortcut's actually pretty annoying though so i would just grab a pickaxe and go this way but it is up to you once you're over here again make sure you're adequately protected from dragon fire throw on your protect melee and you will be able to go to work this is actually multi so it's not really going to affect you too much but i guess if you're ranging or maging just make sure that you are standing out of the melee distance of both of the dragons and then beside that it should be a pretty easy task i mean this is actually kind of like a personal slayer area because I, I doubt you can hold much more people than we currently have here so <laughs> kind of nice in that regard bit strange in terms of the catacombs because typically there's just a lot more monsters per area but this is nice and secluded could make for a nice location for a konar task definitely not a great konar task though i'm not a fan of steel dragons at all so hopefully you guys enjoyed this slayer guide if you did make sure to leave a like anything you want to see from me like i mentioned earlier let me know in a comment down below and on top of that if you want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live make sure to subscribe and with that said hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, peace